the rise of supersonic travel in the 2020s. Plans for supersonic commercial aircraft picked up in the late 1950s and early 1960s. In the United States, Boeing was working on the 2707 while Lockheed was working on the L2000. Russia had developed and built the Tupolev Tu-144, which first flew just before Concorde. Many of these projects failed to materialize, either due to cost, a lack of airline interest, or a combination of the two. Fierce environmental opposition also made supersonic aircraft development difficult in the United States. While the Tu-144 was the first to fly, the most iconic supersonic aircraft in the world was indeed the Concorde. Introduced back in the 1970s, the airliner had a long and interesting history before it was finally retired just after the start of the 21st century. Before its retirement, Concorde was seen as the pinnacle of luxury travel. The British Airways configuration could seat 100 passengers on board its Concords. This comprised 40 passengers in the front half of the aircraft, with a further 60 in the rear portion. The aircraft was primarily used on flights between New York and London and Paris. According to British Airways, Concorde's fastest transatlantic crossing was on 7th of February 1996, when it completed the New York to London flight in two hours, 52 minutes and 59 seconds. The Concorde sonic boom, despite being a major characteristic of the aircraft, contributed to its downfall. Due to the unpopularity of the sonic boom, the aircraft was basically confined to operating transatlantic flights as it had to slow down over land. Additionally, a fatal accident of an Air France Concorde in 2000 also led to a drop in bookings on the aircraft. With the fall in passenger numbers tied with an increase in maintenance costs, the final Concorde carrying passengers landed at London Heathrow on the 24th of October 2003, marking the end of the supersonic era. Since then, leading aircraft manufacturers like Airbus and Boeing have stuck to traditional subsonic jets, favoring high passenger volume and fuel efficiency over speed. However, this could all change within the next 10 years. New innovations in design, manufacturing and noise reduction technology have made supersonic travel a little more appealing than it was 20 or 30 years ago. Numerous companies are working on supersonic technology. The highest profile companies right now are Arian Supersonic and Boom Supersonic. Between the two companies, there's been involvement from companies like Boeing, General Electric, Rolls-Royce and more. A big name in aerospace, Lockheed Martin is partnering with NASA to develop quiet supersonic technology. Meanwhile, a latecomer to this latest supersonic race is Virgin Galactic, unveiling its concept in early August. Let's take a look at this supersonic race, examining the key players, their aircraft, and their approaches to revolutionizing passenger travel. Arian is an American company headquartered in Reno, Nevada, with facilities in Palo Alto, California. The company proudly announces on its website that it has backing from both Boeing and GE Aviation, two of the biggest names in aerospace and aviation. The company's aircraft has been named the AS-2 and is set to accommodate up to 12 passengers and have a range of 5,400 nautical miles at Mach 0.95 and 4,200 at Mach 1.4. We've lifted the veil on the past two years of engineering and innovation. The AS-2 design has progressed exponentially with help from our world-class team of partners and suppliers and we're excited to share our new look. Our robust and rigorous design will usher in a new era of sustainable supersonic flight, Arian Supersonic. Interestingly, the company says that its, quote, boomless cruise flight will allow the aircraft to fly at Mach 1.2 without its sonic boom reaching the ground under certain atmospheric conditions. However, US regulations currently prohibit supersonic flight over land. Accordingly, the aircraft will have to fly at subsonic speeds, around Mach 0.95, over the United States. Nevertheless, Arian is hoping that boomless crews will lead to regulatory changes allowing supersonic flights over the United States eventually. Regardless, the aircraft will allow travelers to shorten their flight time significantly. Here are a few examples of time savings when flying from New York, based on information provided on Arian's website. Dubai – a flight time reduction of 2 hours and 23 minutes. London – a flight time reduction of 1 hour and 55 minutes. Singapore, a flight time reduction of 4 hours and 15 minutes, and Tokyo, a flight time reduction of 1 hour and 57 minutes. At the end of 2019, Arian had also announced an agreement with Safran for work on the landing gear and some of the AS-2's engine design. 
Other big names like Spirit Aero Systems and Honeywell are also part of the project. Its product will be a supersonic passenger jet geared towards business travelers and sized accordingly. Interestingly, Arian says the AS-2 will be the first supersonic aircraft designed with the ability to accept 100% biofuels and claims to be the only supersonic aircraft ever designed for carbon-neutral operation. The AS-2 has been designed from the beginning to meet or exceed all environmental regulations. Airport noise, sonic boom noise, emission standards, we refuse to compromise on environmental factors. In fact, we strive to go beyond regulations to achieve new standards of low-impact, carbon-neutral sustainability, like designing the first engine ever for 100% biofuel operations. Boom Supersonic is set to unveil its prototype supersonic jet this October. The firm has been developing supersonic jet technologies for the last few years, but this is the first time it'll have a completed prototype aircraft to show off to the public. Boom Supersonic hopes to bring back supersonic travel and become the first private company in the world to build faster-than-sound transport in the 21st century. Their mission statement reads, If we can fly twice as fast, the world becomes twice as small, turning far-off lands into familiar neighbors. As of July, they've raised $141 million to build a small prototype design called the XB-1. This is a one-third scale trijet with a top speed of Mach 2.2 with over 1,000 nautical miles or 1,900 kilometers of range. With XB-1, we're demonstrating that we are prepared to bring back supersonic. We're ensuring that the supersonic future is safe and environmentally and economically sustainable. We've learned that the demand for supersonic has grown even faster than we anticipated. This XB-1 baby boom will only seat one pilot and will undergo testing at the famous Edwards Air Force Base a testing site for many of the US Air Force supersonic jets. Most impressive is the development time of the product. Boom Supersonic was only founded in 2014 and has quickly built a prototype in only six years, significantly faster than the development of the Concorde. So far, the public has not seen the aircraft as it is still under assembly and just had its wings mated to the main fuselage. However, this will all change by this October, when the firm reveals its work in a very tangible way. After the XB-1 prototype aircraft performs successful flight tests in 2021, Boom Supersonic will move on to its full-size passenger transport model. Called the Boom Overture, it'll have 55 seats on board, fly Mark 2.2, and will reach a range of 4,500 nautical miles or 8,300 kilometers. The 55-seat configuration was chosen as it seems to be the average number of business class seats found on board other aircraft types. The company says there are 500 routes worldwide suitable for the Overture. Work on the bigger aircraft will start by the end of 2021. The aircraft will be sold directly to airlines, with carriers like Japan Airlines and carrier magnate Richard Branson Virgin Group investing ahead of time to secure the first few aircraft. The finished product will cost $200 million apiece, roughly half the price of the Boeing 777X, and may be in our skies as soon as 2025. Estimates have placed a ticket price for a seat on board of Boom Overture at around $5,000 for a round trip. You'll be able to fly Overture for a quarter the price of a Concorde ticket, or about the same price you'd pay in business class today. That's the most important thing. Blake Scholl, CEO of Boom Supersonic. Virgin Galactic is also eyeing a place in the race to realize supersonic flight. The space travel company announced on August 3rd a Memorandum of Understanding with Rolls-Royce, having completed a Mission Concept Review, or MCR, for its Mark III supersonic aircraft. In conjunction with representatives from NASA, the MCR saw Virgin Galactic outline several critical parameters for the new aircraft. The company is targeting a Mark III aircraft and will follow a similar rough design to Concorde with a Delta Wing. For reference, Concorde had a maximum speed of Mark 2.04. However, unlike Concorde, the aircraft would have a much reduced payload of just 9 to 19 passengers while cruising higher than 60,000 feet. The aircraft would be configurable in first and business class configurations, depending on the needs. Virgin Galactic will begin work on finalizing the aircraft design. Its team is working to set the design of specific systems, in addition to working out which materials will be used to construct the plane. This will need to take into account thermal management. Other considerations yet to be taken into account include such challenges as maintenance, noise, emissions, and economics. 
Partnering with Rolls-Royce, Virgin Galactic will collaborate on engine development for the new aircraft. Rolls-Royce certainly has a fair idea of what it's doing when it comes to powering supersonic airlines. The engine manufacturer previously built the Olympus 593 with Snecma that powered the Concorde. It seems as though the manufacturer is also in high demand when it comes to supersonic flight, as it has already signed an agreement with Boom Supersonic. Commenting on the August announcement, George Whitesides, Chief Space Officer, Virgin Galactic, said, We're excited to complete the mission concept review and unveil this initial design concept of a high-speed aircraft, which we envision as blending safe and reliable commercial travel with an unrivaled customer experience. We're pleased to collaborate with the innovative team at Rolls-Royce as we strive to develop sustainable, cutting-edge propulsion systems for the aircraft. Lockheed Martin is quietly working in the background on supersonic jet technology for passenger air travel in partnership with NASA. The X-59 Quest, quiet supersonic technology, is the company's experimental aircraft meant to develop technology to support future supersonic airframe builders. The company says that this project will be used to collect community response data on the acceptability of a quiet sonic boom generated by the unique design of the aircraft. The data will help NASA provide regulators with the information needed to establish an acceptable commercial supersonic noise standard to lift the ban on commercial supersonic travel over land. So far, it looks like the X-59 will be designed to cruise at 55,000 feet at speeds of Mach 1.4. Covering Concorde's demise in several videos, it's become clear that many countries did not accept overland travel due to the sonic boom that was caused by supersonic jets when the sound barrier was broken. Thus, the focus on noise reduction seems like a sound strategy. No pun intended. Lockheed Martin's X-59 Quest was originally scheduled to have its first flight in 2021, with community flight tests to begin in 2023. However, a public affairs officer at NASA has informed Simple Flying that changes are underway, saying, While 2021 was our target date, potential impacts from COVID and production challenges are being assessed, and an updated target flight date will be announced once this assessment is complete. The last few years have offered a flurry of news and excitement around the revival of supersonic passenger air travel. This excitement is set to grow more and more in upcoming years as we move from drafts on a computer screen to functioning prototypes to fully functional certified aircraft. Of the aircraft we mentioned above, is there one that you would prefer to fly with? Let us know which one and why by leaving a comment below. Did you know that we publish over 175 stories every single week on simpleflying.com? Be sure to check the link in the description for more great stories just like this. Thanks for watching. And be sure to like and subscribe before you go.